Okay there singing world, this video will offer Italian pronunciation help for the aria Una Donna Quindici Anni from Così Fan Tutte by Mozart. We will explore the tips and tricks to help you sing your aria without accent and also discuss the proper open and closed vowels, non-phonetic things such as phrasal doubling and also assimilation. But before we do that, please direct your attention to the description of this video below. I have uh, written out the entire text with all the non-phonetic things, the open vowels, the assimilations, and the phrasal doubling so you can follow along as we do the video. If you do not understand these thing, these concepts by the end of this video, you will understand it perfectly. I will go through it in great detail. Uh, besides that, I have uh, various links to my websites, my Facebook fan page. Please check it out. Give me a like uh, if you have a moment. Also, the most important link there is the uh, uh, pronunciation dictionary on the RIE site. Uh, you may follow the link below. You might, you can also type in R-A-I-D-O-P and this site will come up or R-A-I Dictionario. This is the RIE pronunciation dictionary. What you can do with this site is type in any word and it will show you the pronunciation of that word in Italian. There's a playback button so you can hear a native Italian speaking the word. It shows you the open and closed E's and O's. And what I love about it the most is it acknowledges the existence of non-phonetic Italian such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. And if you didn't understand these terms by the end of this video, you will if you watch to the end. Um, so let's go through our text um, one word at a time and we will go through all of the, the tips and tricks to get your Italian sounding without accent and also I'd like to examine all of the common mistakes that I hear in auditions and in performance. So let's begin. So the first word is una, una. So u is always u and a is always a. So the first thing we tend to do is we will, in an unaccented a, we will tend to neutralize it as we do in uh, English. So if you think about in English, we say America, right? And a. Uh, in a, uh, and it's in the unstressed position, right? So una a, uh, right? You go all the way to a, uh, una. Uh, so an Italian would say a uh, medica a, uh, right? So none of those a's uh would be neutralized. Doesn't matter where it is, a uh is always a. Uh. It is a phonetic vowel, and it does not harmonize, meaning that nothing influences it. And the next is u, uh, and that is also a phonetic vowel, and it does not get influenced by any anything, right? So, una. The next mistake, we're still in the first word, next mistake you can make is doubling the N, right? I hear a lot, una, right? As we tend to do in, as English speakers, we love consonants, right? So, um, it's not that the Italians do not love consonants, it's that it's the, it's the vibration and uh, single versus double consonants Consonants are very sharp in Italian, but how they vibrate is way different from how they vibrate in English. So, how do we make a double N versus a single N? So, a double N is done by holding the tongue in position while we phonate, right? So, mmm, that's double N. So, if I do una, and I hold the tongue while I phonate on, the, on that, and I have pitch, it's double N no matter what I do. How do I make single N? Well, I think about the vibration of the vowels. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, right? Now, that same vibration is, is the same as ooh, na, one N, right? The other thing that happens is I do not allow the tongue to remain in the N position during phonation. So it's only a millisecond that, that we, we make that N. It is just as strong. It's just a point in the middle of two vowels. Una. It's a very strong N, but it's just the point. Okay? So now this is going to be very useful in this line because we have two double N's. One that uh, really makes the word understandable and then the second one is dangerous, right? So now the next word is donna. So we have our first O and O is a non-phonetic vowel, meaning that uh, half of the time it, it well, it makes two different sounds, right? So you can either have a closed O, uh, which is like the O in oats, or you can have an open O, which is A-W, aw, 
right? Both of those are without the glide. So um, Italians do not harmonize their vowels, okay? So in English, we harmonize. We would say, ah, and our jaw moves, or oh, and close, close our jaw, right? In Italian, it's o, oh, pure, and it stays ah, oh, pure. So this one is on a stress, and it's an open vowel. Donna, with a double N. Donna. Okay? So next, we have uh, ah, is a strong, known as a strong monosyllable. So we're talking about monosyllables. They are either strong or weak. And what do I mean by that? A strong monosyllable will cause what is known as a phrasal doubling. So it will cause the next consonant to be double. Okay, so that ah is a strong monosyllable. So if you notice in the text below, I've written out a double Q, right? So the word next word is quindici, which has a stress on the antipenultimate syllable. This is not a normal stress. So most stress in Italian is on the penultimate, the second to last syllable, right? So the normal stress for this word would be quindici, but it's not in this case, right? So this is the one before the second to last, quindici. This is a rare stress in Italian, right? So uh, if we notice, e is a phonetic vowel. It is always e, i, printed i, right? E, 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 right? So we don't neutralize anything. Um, the other thing is that when we say a quindici, you see there's a double Q. A quindici. And the Q in this case, the QU, is a KU, right? If you notice an IPA, this would be KW, right? Which makes Americans do it from the American W position. I think about this stuff all the time. It really keeps me up at night, right? So. Americans will do a W when they see IPA, and here's the American accent, Quindici, it's way down here, Oi, right? And it's really, it's K, U, it's U, Quindici, Quindici, it's up here, in the, where the U is, higher in the palate, okay? So that's the first mistake we can make in this word, right? U, Quindici, we're up there. The other mistake is the N has to assimilate into the D. So we're going to say D. The N goes right before the D. Quindici. So you understand? Well, the N is not down in the American position again. Not Quindici, where we're going up and down and up and down. No, it's one track. Quindici. Okay, so there's a lot of, I have a lot to say on this one word, right? But there, you can make five mistakes in one word, right? The next thing is that the ch is a single, right? So we could do quindici. Now that's a double ch, right? So ci is chi, because i is a soft vowel, right? We're going to, we're going to talk about one thing at a time, right? But ci is chi, right? But I could single that or I could double it, right? So, Quindici. If I stop phonation, it's double chi, and that is incorrect in this word, right? So you want e, e, right? So if you do three e vowels without a glottal, right? You don't want e, e, e. But if you do e, quindici, right? very slowly, very exaggerated, but notice it's a single ch because I do not stop phonation before it. So, quindici, not quindici, okay? All right, so that's clear, single ch versus double ch. Okay, going on, anni, it is so imperative that you double the N in this word. I, I can't stress this enough, right? Because A-N-N-I in Italian means years, right? So, we're talking about a woman who is 15 years old. Right? Anni. And if you say ani, it's anuses. Okay? So try not to laugh, but that's what the word is, right? Anni. Right? Uh, when I was in Italy, the Italians would line up waiting for the American sopranos to start singing so they could hear all of the, the, the you know, words mispronounced and, and laugh. So th this is the one. They're waiting for you, right? Anni. Make sure. 
so that we, we uh, your, your tongue is held in position while you double that end. Okay, going on. Okay, here is a really old word nobody says anymore. And not only that, there are, you could pretty much pronounce it any way and it's right. Okay, so the original was two vowels, believe it or not. There was an open E and a closed E. And it was day, right? Right? I mean, you're not going to say it like that, but that's the way it would be said. Now, there are actually words in Italian that have two vowels in a row, and you say both of them. The, the biggest example in a libretto, you see it all the time, is the word for uh, may you be, right? In, in, the, in the conjunctivo tense, the subjunctive tense. Uh, tense, which would be see, right? So if you say may you be damned, see maledetto, right? So so there's two e's, and you have to say two vowels. So this word was originally die, right? And it could also be two a's, de a. Okay. So now is the time uh, to talk about uh, closed and open e's. But before we do that. You could also do a very simple version of this, which is day, right? That's acceptable, and that's probably the best way to sing it, right? So all three ways are acceptable, day, day, or day. The, one, the third one is probably the most practical for singing. All three are acceptable. So now let's talk about open and closed E. E is the other non-phonetic vowel besides O. And uh, the printed E... The normal IPA E is pronounced A, as in hey, without the glide. And the Greek E, the rounded E symbol that you see, is A, right? So E can be A or A. Okay, so closed or open. Now, closed and open has nothing to do with how big the vowel is, how open it is. They're both good for singing, right? No matter what you do, they're always good for singing. You never uh, compromise your voice singing a vowel. So A. A, A, right? Open, right? I mean, so a closed vowel could be open, right? So, um, so uh, where the where the vowel is is important to how, whether it's open or closed, right? So, um, when when we get to stressed and unstressed vowels, uh, accented and unaccented vowels, we will go over the the rule for that more. So let's go on for now. So. Um, the next word has a closed E, and this is an infinitive. There's an infinitive that's ere, right? Ends in ere, volere, sapere. Um, so it's always closed E, okay? So um, the E in this is closed. There's a single P. It's not sapere, it's sapere. Uh, and then the E is take it off, so it's truncated, right? So this R will roll. Saper. Okay, so let's go over the rule for R. R rolls when it touches a consonant. Okay, so if I were to just stop after saper, it will roll. Okay, so now if I go right into the ogni, it will flip. The reason is because it's surrounded by vowels. So here's the rule for R again. Any R that touches a consonant is rrrr. Any R that is between vowels is flipped. So if we do these two words together, saperoni, see, it just flips because it's surrounded by vowels. Okay, so um, going on, ogni is a closed O, and ni is uh, a yi preceded by a v an n that's voiced, right? Ni. So it's ogni if you do it in slow motion. Um, it, I, I strongly suggest you practice in slow motion so that when you do it, you can do it fast. Um, you must realize that in Italian, these things uh, require way more flesh in the face than what we use in English, right? So, ogni is a lot of flesh in the face. I mean, like motion of flesh in the face, right? So, practice yi, right? Start backwards, y i, yi, and then ni, ogni. Going on. Gran is g r a n, and if you notice, I have 
written it with a funky sil syllable, uh, funky letter, right? M. It looks like an M. Okay, this is to mark an assimilation, and we'll explain this as we do the next word, ma da. So it's an open O on a stress, ma da. Okay, so when I precede an M with an N, so that gran in before the ma da is going to assimilate into the M like this. Watch when I do both of them together. Grammada, grammada. What happened exactly? I'm going to say mada. My lips come together, right? The N goes right there on the point of the lips and almost disappears. It's an assim it's called an assimilation, right? Grammada. So an Italian will speak and that'll go by very fast. The N will assimilate. The N is never done in the mouth like this. Gran mada. You could say that. If you stop, right? The problem comes when we sing and we're singing legato things. So to put the N in the mouth is gran moda. So what happened? I say N mm, there with the tip of my tongue, the ridge behind my teeth, my upper teeth, right? I'm trying to sing legato, so I have to release the tongue. Now while singing legato, I end up with a shadow vowel and then the M comes to the lips. I'll do the whole thing, right? Gran, tip of the tongue. I release the tongue. Gran, shadow vowel, moda, right? So, if I don't do that, gran moda, I stay in one track. Gran moda, you see? So, that's the most efficient way. Italians do this when they speak. They don't quite realize it. If, you know, if you're around somebody Italian, ask them. Say, hey, do you do an M there? You know? And they'll say, no, I don't. I do N. Watch. Grammada. And that's exactly what most of them will say, right? Or if they find themselves doing it, they say, hmm, I never thought. I never realized I did that. Okay? So this is something that is uh, shown on the pronunciation dictionary, the Rye site. So um, you'll see, like, whole lines of Dante with these assimilations written out and said by the native speaker when you press the playback button. Okay. So... And the next thing in this gr is the R is rolled, you see, because it touches a G. Grammada. The O is open. Now, what happens when we open an O in a word is we love, and it's a single consonant, we love to double the consonant as, as English speakers, right? So, ma-da, we'll do that, or ma-da. Ma There'll be some doubling of the D. Don't do it, right? Ma-da. Okay, good. So, uh, going on, dove. Dove is closed O. Il, I L. Diavolo. Diavolo, right? So it's O O, closed O. Um, the accent is on the A ah in this word. And the I is really is a semi vowel, right? It's not a Y in, it's not an English Y. Dia, dia. It's from the E position. Diavolo. You understand? See, so here's the other problem, right? When you have a semi-vowel, you could do, oh, that's like a Y. Yeah. When we do, our position is way down here. Think about doing it as a vowel first, right? Practice diavolo, even though you would never say it that way. That would be wrong, right, if you hold the E. But start in that position. Diavolo, diavolo. And then it goes by lickety-split. Now we're going to talk about accented syllables and unaccented syllables and how they influence open and closed O's and E's because this is very important. Okay, so if you notice, the accent in diavolo is on the A. Ah. So this means that all of the unstressed O's and E's that would occur would be closed. So this is the good news. Anything that is on an unaccented syllable is going to be closed O's and E's. So you don't have to worry about anything on an unaccented syllable. Diavolo, right? Close those. It is only the stressed syllable that you have to worry about. Okay? So now the bad news is on the stressed syllables, uh, wor words can be either have open or closed E's and O's. So for instance, donna, we've already done it, has a stressed O and it's open, right? So, but sapere, has a stressed E and it's closed. And there are no rules. No matter what anybody tells you, there are no rules for stressed vowels. You have to memorize. Now, there are some formulas for suffixes 
that we can go over, like amoroso, anything that's oso is a closed vowel. Uh, one is a closed vowel. Um, a lot of ente, depending on what it is, right? If it's not a gerund, it's closed. But you, we, you have to do that case by case, right? The best way to do it is just mark your score and memorize it for your aria which one is open, which one is closed. Okay, so going on, the word a, h is silent in Italian, right? A, so it's h a a. Now this is a strong monosyllable. So here we have a strong monosyllable, and I notice that the next word will double, right? So you wouldn't say ala, you'd say alla, a alla. Okay, so double l. Coda. Here we have a stressed o, and it is closed in the single d. Coda. Cosa. Okay, cosa. Open o, open o, on a stress. Now we have the word a, eh, which is the word for is, a, eh, and it's open. So uh, the word a eh and a are in this sentence, right? A means and, a eh means is. So those are the first two words you should memorize as far as open and closed. They're both strong monosyllables. A eh for is, a for and. So if you notice the B doubles, a eh, bene, right? Bene. So here is a good example of why we don't we don't have to worry about the unstressed vowels only the stressed right so the stressed vowel in bane is an open e and then the unstressed is a closed e we know that the unstressed are going to be closed so bane right so what's hard is when we open a vowel again we're going to want to say bane with a double n right we know that we don't hold a phonation, right? Bene. So let's talk now about double B. A lot of doublings in Italian happen with the stop of phonation. For instance, a double T or a double ch, as we've uh, right, as we've done, like cantucci for cookies, right? Cantucci, right? Stop in phonation. Tutto. See, I stop phonation, right? B does not do that. We don't say a Bene and stop phonation, you see. It's a bene. It's hardly, you can hardly hear it. A bene. It's so slight, right? So you don't want to overdo double B in this case, right? In, when you're in doubt, just leave it out. A bene. That's double B. Going on, a mal. So notice double M, close D, a mal. So, m, mm, double M. All I have to do is hold the M in phonation. Cosa. So open O, open E. Cosa. Okay, we have our word again. Day. Saper. We have again. Le is a weak monosyllable. See, so see, there are some weak monosyllables. Weak monosyllables are actually fewer than strong monosyllables in Italian. It's actually easier to memorize the weak monosyllables. Now, there is actually there is a book with a list of strong and weak monosyllables written out. It's Evelina Colorni's Singer's Italian. It's a green book. You might have already had it in diction class. If you if you find the book, you go to the last four or five pages. She lists all of the strong and weak monosyllables in, in a couple pages. Um, so le is a weak monosyllable. So it's not le maliziete, it's le, maliz le maliziete, just one M. Now, here we have a double T in maliziete. So, double T and a closed E before there, right? Maliziete. So, how do we do double T? We, um, do we do two T's to do a double T? Listen again. Maliziete. Did I do two T's? No. I only did one T. So, what makes the double T? It's the stop in phonation, right? Maliziete, double T. See, stop in phonation, right? So let's go through that step by step. How do we do it for singing? Um, we do a long A. Tie, we stop phonation. We go up to the T, we don't say it. Maliziete, and then we say the T. Maliziete, see? So long vowel, stop phonation, go up to the T, don't say it, and say the T. Okay. So, what if I were to do two T's? Maliziete. 
Maliziette, see it's too much. Or I hear this a lot, Maliziette, with the cut on the vowel before the double T. When you speak, if you're, you're somebody who speaks Italian, you can say Maliziette, right? And you can cut the vowel kind of short before the double T. When you sing, you have to elongate. So that's the difference between lyric diction and spoken Italian. One other difference that occurs in this word is the, the TZ of the Z, right? So when I speak, I can say maliziete, um, stop the Z. When I sing, I have to hold the E out longer, maliziete. So this is two, two things in this word you have to take care to sing with very good uh, lyric Italian. Okay, going on. Okay. Straightforward enough, right? Other than the K sound, let's talk about the K in um, the K in Italian. Uh, so uh, consonants come in pairs, voiced and unvoiced, right? So you have k, and then you have g. Both of those are, are formed exactly the same way. The only difference is one has a phonation and one doesn't, right? G voiced, k, no voice. Vocal cords are not. Right, so K in Italian is very strong, but it has no air like English K. Right, and I'm exaggerating the English one obviously, but you see what I mean. So you want you want to practice G, K. Right, you want to go from the voiced and then just the point where it's unvoiced. In all consonants in English that have air through them like that, you want to do the same thing. So like. T, right? That's the English D, T, right? From the almost the voiced, but just enough to get it unvoiced. Let's go on. Innamorano. So the stressed vowel in in this is on the O, okay? And again, this is third person plural. They do something, right? They are enamored. Innamorano. Innamorano. So the accent is on the antipenultimate in that, right? Second to last syllable. Parlano. Though anything that's third person plural, right? So the accent is on the O and it's closed. Now, this is a very good word to practice. Single versus double. In, double N. Namora, right? Mo. M is single. Innamorano. Innamorano. And you can also practice E, A, O, A, O. Practice the purity of your vowels. You have five vowels in this word, right? We will tend to neutralize. I speak English all day, so I, I have to fight in this word, right? E, A, O, A, O. Innamorano. See, now I have it. So that's how you get this word. Uh, notice the single R. It's not innamorano, right? And not only that, the R does not uh, harmonize the O. More, right? So we can do that. The R will go into a, an English position, or a, a American English position, even worse, right? Innamorano, mo, o, o, right? Going on. Li. This is another big flesh word, right? So what is this? This is a Y-I preceded by a voiced L, right? So ye is the end of the word. Ye, Y-I, preceded by L. Ye. So if you practice backwards, ye, 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 right? So, gli amanti, gli amanti, gli amanti. And then you can do it fast, you see. Amanti. So, we have single M, and then we kind of have a double N going into the T. So, the N touching the T is going to phonate, right? Amanti. Double N, right? Even though it's printed as single N. Amanti, but not amanti, not double M, right? That's the common mistake in this word. All right, going on. Again, we have an ere infinitive, right? To make off as, right? Fingere is to pretend, right? Fingere, 
finger, a, a, right, e, a, is how you practice, right, finger, the n goes into the j, right, finger, and then these r's come together, so nor normally riso, it's finger riso, the r rolls, riso, finger pianti, pianti, right, so piangere, so that n assimilates into the g, piangere, so pianti, so that pianti, the n is with the tip of the tongue before the t. Next, uh, here we have a, a, an are infinitive, right, so the are is the first conjugation, so any e's because the accent is on the a, ah, any e's in a, a word will be closed, right? Aspettare, uh, inventare, so close the inventar. Okay, so now we also have another n assimilation before the v. Um, we'll, we'll go over that in a second. Uh, so, um, so the the e. To practice, right, the, the I, the E, and the A, right, you, again, you will practice vowels, right? E, A, A, E, A, A, inventar, inventar. Okay, so now let's go back to that V, right, the N before the V. What? Watch what's happening, what's happening? Inventar. If I did it slowly, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it this way because it's too much, but watch if I'd slow it down in slow motion. In so where is the N? It's on the bottom lip, isn't it? Why is that? Well, this is another assimilation. If you notice, I've written that uh, that N symbol with the little overhang. That's the I pace uh, symbol for this assimilation. Um, so I'm going to say V, right? To say a V, a fricative, or um, V, right? Or a, that that V, or an F, right? Frangere, right? F, v. It's with the bottom lip touching the top teeth. So the N will assimilate there and almost disappear again, right? So watch again how fast the N goes by. Inventar. Inventar. So it doesn't call any attention to itself unless you're looking at it right now. You are, right? So, uh, that's, that's beautiful for legato. You, you, you don't have to do any shadow vowels to do that. What would happen if the N went in your mouth? Inventar. Again, the same thing that happened with the M, right? It, it will, uh, the tongue will come off. You will have to re-attack while doing a vowel, and you'll end up with a shadow vowel, right? Inventar. As you release the tongue, you lose your legato. You lose your placement. Okay, so the best option, again, is inventar. This is the toughest assimilation for a non-Italian speaker to get. Okay. Um, it also happens before F, right? So the two fricatives, V, F, those are the bottom lip touching the top teeth, right? So infranto, that word, see? Before an F, right? Uh, inverno, winter, right? Same thing, right? The bottom lip. Okay, so you can also do it wrong, and how do you do it wrong? By holding the phonation, right? In, if I did that, inventar, you would get called out. You, somebody would say, what's that? That's weird, right? You're basically doing it right, you're just exaggerating it, right? So, again, you take something good, you exaggerate it, it becomes vulgar. Next thing, E is just E, bai, okay? So, bai is a uh, plural for belly, right? So it's just a contraction, belly, and it's open. Uh, next is uh, two closed E's, A, A, right? Perché, so perché, right? A, A. So uh, ending accented, words that end in an accent on the ultimate syllable are also rarer than the penultimate. The penultimate accent is the most common in Italian. Uh, but a lot of words end on a stressed E, and um, you have to memorize which ones are closed and which ones are open, right? So there are words like pie, open, foot, right? But then you have 
per k closed. Okay, so that, that's another thing you have to memorize as you go case by case. This one happens to be closed. Next, you have your word dai, right? Da or de. In un momento. So now you have in, I N, and then you have an N assimilation because you're going to say momento. So un momento. So we went through this already with the last M. So I'm not going to go through that entire process again. But that M is on your lips. Un momento, right? And you don't call attention to it. Um, a lot of into words, nouns, are closed, right? Momento. So close the. I know we love to say momento, right? Right? Momento in this. Going on. Dar. This is going to roll because you're going to have two R's coming together, right? Retta. So it's open E, two T's. Darretta. Ta. And here we have our strong monosyllable again, a cento. So there's a stop in phonation, a cento. And Windows has decided to log me out for some reason. I'm still here. There we are. Uh, okay. So, so da re ta. And then the a is going to go together, right? So when you say this whole word, da re ta. Cento. And we know the A ah is in there, the preposition, because of the double C. And that's how we're understood. A cento, right? So double C. Okay, going on. Colle. So closed O, closed O, right? Double L by holding the L in position, right? L colle. Same thing, pupille, right? So double L. So this is a good line for double L. One danger is to double the P, right? Pupile. So if you stop phonation before the P, it's double P. Pupile. So keep the word propelling itself forward and stop on that double L. Pupile. Next, parlar. Both R's are rolled. Parlar. Right? The first R touches an L. The second R is going to touch the C of the next word. And here we have another M assimilation, comile, comile, not calling attention to that assimilation at all, right? So it's C-O-M-I-L-L-E. Dar, rolled R. You see, we can go fast now because I've basically told you everything I know. I've gotten all the principles out of the way, right? Spam, eh? So it's a single M. Open E on the stress, right? Close the spam. -e. So spam -e would be the mistake you could make, right? Double M spam. -e. A tu T. Now notice we have two double T's in this word because the strong monosyllable A. So we double the first T and the second T. A tu T. A tu T. And that's how you say it, right? How do we do it? We go up to the T. We have a long vowel before the T. We stop phonation. We go up to the T. We don't say it. Then we say it. A tu T. Okay, now, here is the, um, the conjunctivo te tense again. The may they be. Or, may, yeah, may they be, the, that tense, right? So, it's sieno. The, the E is not a semivowel. It's not sien. I hear sien a lot. Right? It's sieno, right? Sieno. Close the, because the accent is on the E. Sieno, right? And then this N will assimilate into the B, right? So siembali, like that, right? We've already gone uh, through N before B, right? So you're going to say B, lips together, the N goes on the lips. Siembali. So now, open E, two L's. Right, belly. We already know the principle for double L. Let's go on. O is a is um is the word for or. It's a strong monosyllable. O bruti. But it's just this, don't do too much double B. And in fact, if you're in doubt, leave it out. O bruti is fine, right? Don't stop. It becomes vulgar. O bruti. Double T. Rolled R. Sapere, right? Saper, close D. 
nascondersi. So note that the SI at the end is a reflexive. So this is to hide oneself, right? So the C, anytime you see C, it's reflexive in Italian. And it, it is an unvoiced S, right? Um, so, so the C is tacked on at the end of nascondere, which is the infinitive, to hide, right? Nascondere, nascondersi, to hide oneself. Okay, so a couple things in this word. Everything's closed in it, right? The O is closed, the E is closed. The R is rolled into the S. And then there's a, there's a, um, the S when you speak in the beginning, you can say nascondersi and hiss the S like that. When you sing, you have to separate like this. Na, scon, der, si. Right? Does that make sense? Na, scon, der, si. You, if so, if you had four notes, na, scon, der, si, the na has to be completely on the first note. No hint of an S. Na, na, scon, na, scon, der, si, der, si. Does that make sense? So you're separating it differently than you would in speech. So again, that's lyric diction versus spoken dic, uh, spoken Italian, right? Next, senza. Now Z is a TZ or a DZ depending on the word. This is a TZ. The, op the first uh, E is open. Senza. Now we have that funny uh, N before fricative assimilation, right? Confondersi, confondersi, confondersi. If I do it, I have to do it really fast, right? You get it out of the way, you don't call attention to it. The N is on the bottom lip, never goes in your mouth. Uh, confondere is a closed D. And again, it's to uh, confuse. In Italian, you don't get confused, you confuse yourself, right? So, confondersi, it's a reflexive verb. Uh, senza, again. Arrossire, and the S rule again is in effect here. Everything is closed in arrossire, right? A O. The R is rolled, it's double R. But the S, when you speak, you can say arrossire. You see, hissing the S. When you sing, arrossire. So if you had four notes, arrossire, not arrossire. So the S can be early. So you practice that, right? Saper, saper mentire. So mentire. I hear a lot men with the open E. The accent, remember, is on the ire, right? So the E is closed. So now we get to another point, right? You've seen the diction books. A lot of diction books, you see the endings, the, uh, the unstressed. And they're marked as open. Now, why is that, right? Well, at the turn of the century, the um, uh, people noted that when singers sang in Italian, Italian singers, they tended to open up the unstressed vowels, right? So instead of the spoken position A and O, right, which is really not that closed, right, they would open it more than speech. So it was A, O, like shout, the stretch of shouting, right? So they got marked as open. In no way should you sing these as at and aw, right? Um, that is that will be an exaggeration of that principle, right? So they are opened up, so just as a safeguard against singing it closed down and bad for the voice. Okay, so um, I have had a lot of success with my clients if they have been trying to attempting to sing them open to 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 persuade them to sing them close immediately you will notice a difference how much easier it is to sing it, it, it's actually impossible to keep any kind of forward motion going by singing those open okay so I would suggest that you just try singing them close if you've been singing them open okay going on so now you have the word a is a strong monosyllable, so there's double Q. E qual, qual. Remember that the U, it's from the U position, not the W position. Qual, right? Qual, right? And even if I left that L alone and I were Italian, uh, you would uh, you would have a shadow vowel at the end because you're holding that 
L position in phonation. Regina. So the accent is on E. The E syllable, the unstressed will be A. Regina. Going on dall'alto. Both of those L's are you're going to feel very exaggerated when you sing, but that's what you need to do. Dall'alto. So both L's are held while you phonate, right? Solio. Solio. Now I'm exaggerating, right? The first one's open, the second one's closed, right? They're not that different, right? Solio. Okay. So G L I is Lio. L and a Y, right? So L presided by Y, right? Lio. Solio. Going on. Col. C O L is co il contracted, right? Co il col. Posso open O, closed O at the end, right? The stress is open. Posso. Remember, we're only worrying about the stressed vowel. I'll say it over and over again. Uh, I realize this becomes a major source of confusion, right? Posso. So open vowel is on the stress, closed vowel on unstressed. Here we have our double V because of the strong monosyllable A. E voglio. Notice what I did. I didn't. V is another one. You don't stop phonation, right? It's not E voglio. No. E voglio. And voglio. So it rhymes with soglio. Open O on the stress. Close O at the end. Farsi. To make oneself. Do or to do so, to do something with to want with oneself, right? Farsi, ubidir, ubidir. A double B in this case again. We love to stop phonation, right? Ubidir, no, ubidir, right? So here's the other thing, right? The R will influence our E if we're not thinking about it, because English speakers R will be ear, like the ear, right? Ubi dear no. So practice U E E Ubi dear. Okay, going on. Par Cabian Gusto. Cabiano, right? That's yeah. Cabiano. That's a very awkward thing to say in an aria. Gusto. Okay, par cabian, cabian gusto. Uh, going on, di tal dottrina. Double T, dottrina. Go up to the double T, don't say it, and then say it, right? Stop phonation. The R is rolled because it touches a T. Not dottrina. Don't double that N, right? Listen to yourself. Feel that N. Feel the vowels. Do single end there. Uh, viva. Viva. Right? Ah at the end. Single Vs. De spina. Again, when you speak, you can say de spina. And, and we're used to, like, what role are you doing? Oh, I'm doing de spina. De, it's become an English word, right? So don't sing de spina. It's de. The accent is on the E. De spina. So the E is A, right? And so when you sing, you're going to separate. De spina. Now the last line presents us with a choice because you have two doubling words in a row, two strong monosyllables. So when you have two strong monosyllables in a row, you can pick one of them, not both, right? So we can use sa as a strong monosyllable and say que sa servir. Right? That's nice, right? Or we can pick K as a strong monosyllable and say que sa servir, que sa servir. So one S, right? One double S. Um, you can't do both. You can't que, que, que sa servir, right? Not good, right? In fact, the one for the after sa is better if you stop phonation, right? Que sa servir. That's a better way to do that, not que sa servir. That's a little ugly when you sing, right? The other one, que sa servir, is better, is okay too, right? Que sa, que sa, que sa servir. The, the first one is probably preferable, but you can mix it up since she repeats it so much in this aria. 
So the repetition gives you a chance to say it differently. Okay, so now we've been through the whole thing as uh, word for word. Let's do whole lines, finding the arc, finding the ups and the downs, finding the rhymes, right? So um, when you're singing long lines, uh, long lines not only come from your breath and your legato, but from your mind and your your um, your knowledge of the arc of the phrase, right? So you don't want to have too many downs. Uh, so here we go. Una donna a quindici anni, de saper ogni gran moda, dove il diavolo ha la coda, cosa è bene e mal cos'è. De saper le maliziette che innamorano gli amanti, finger riso, finger pianti, inventar i bei perché. So we have a false rhyme, right? We have a rhyme with Cosette in perché, right? So there are, that's what we're rhyming, the first four lines to the second four lines. So it's a pretty long phrase. Going on. De in un momento da retta cento. Notice how disjunct that is because of all the doubles, right? Da retta cento. Con le pupille. Parlar con mille. Dar speme a tutti. Siem belli o brutti. Saper nascondersi. Senza confondersi, senza arrossire, saper mentire. E qual regina dall'alto soglio col posso e voglio farsi ubbidir. Now notice that how sing song the rhyme was, but it was all with the the object to get to ubidir. So ubidir was your big down. But in, in, be, in between that large overseeing arc, there were all of these smaller rhymes. Going on. Parchiabian gusto di tal dottrina viva de spina che sa servir. Thank you so much for watching. Please share, please like, please comment as you see fit. And as always, don't forget to see your coach. And we'll see you at the opera.